It is that time of year again, guys wedding season when everyone this year seems to be getting married. And I must say, I'm doing a wedding almost every single day at this point. So today I thought I'd share with you my technique on how you can create this beautiful warm wedding style color grading effect in your photos using Lightroom Classic. And I'm gonna start right now. Right guys, so the first thing we're gonna do is gonna go ahead and choose a photo. And I recommend choosing a photo with a couple or maybe even an engagement shoot like my example photo here. It works really well when you're applying it to portrait or even wedding style photos. So make sure to take it into consideration if you're thinking of doing this effect. It may work with landscape photos, but I must say it's not something I do, so I haven't originally tested it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead over to Lightroom, make sure it's all open up already. Go ahead over to the develop panel and drop down to your basics. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and fetch temperature first. So we go to our temperature here and we're gonna go ahead and choose 7,200 Kelvin. Now, I was shooting in raw, but plus five of your temperature will be correct in JPEG. And with tint, what we're gonna do that is take that and drop that by minus five, lovely. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna affect the overall exposure and contrast of the photo. So with exposure here, we're gonna go ahead and increase that by around minus two five. So that's about a quarter of a stop brighter than the original photo. And with contrast here, we're gonna add in a nice amount of contrast. So somewhere around 30% or 29 in this particular case will work great. Okay, so in shadows, we want to overall increase the shadows here. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna increase those to around about, about here. So around about 45%. And then with a white, so we're gonna do the same. We're gonna go about 30. And then with the blacks, we're also gonna do the same about plus 20 there, lovely. Okay, so let's go ahead and move down to texture, clarity, and dehaze. So with texture, I like adding in a small amount of texture, so around about 15% in this particular case. Now with clarity, I like reducing clarity, and I think that works really well when you're applying it to environmental portraits or wedding style photos. It softens the skins of basically everyone there. So that's what I recommend doing. So taking clarity here and dropping that down by around about minus 15 to minus 20. And with dehaze to reduce a little bit of that haze found in the background here, what I can recommend doing is going to dehaze and increasing that by around about five. Then with vibrance, I like increasing vibrance to around 15%, but leaving saturation alone. And if you want to know the difference between saturation and vibrance, go ahead and watch this video here, or you can find it in the link in a description. It goes a little bit more in detail of what the difference between vibrance and saturation is. It's one of my Tuesday, recent Tuesday two minute tutorials. Okay, so once we've finished with that, we're gonna go ahead and close that. And we're gonna go ahead and open up the tone curves. Okay, so in tone curves, we want to add in an S style tone curve. This will naturally add in some contrast. So what we're gonna do is go to our tone curve here, go to the highlights here and bring those up. Okay, so we're gonna go to the mid tones here and bring that down ever so slightly. And then in the shadow areas, we're gonna bring that down a little bit more. Again, creating this a bit more S curve, as you can see causing here. And then in the shadows, so the zero point or input of zero, we want to add in or bring that up slightly. So we've got an input of zero, and as long as that input or output is higher than the input, then you've added in a nice matte look to the shadows there. So we're gonna go for a, and a look that looks similar to this. Maybe bring it down a little bit less, it's looking a little bit bright. But something like this will work absolutely perfectly. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna affect the red channel, green channel, and blue channel independently from each other. So we've done all of them, as you can see in the white selection, but let's head over to the reds. So in the reds, we're gonna add in a little bit more red to the highlights, and we're gonna add a little bit of cyan to the shadows. And we're gonna do the same with the green. So we're gonna add in a little bit of green in the highlights, and add a little bit more magenta in the shadows. And then in the blue, we're gonna add in a little bit more blue to the highlights, but not by too much. And then in the shadows, we're gonna add in a little bit more yellow. And as you can see, that really is affecting the grass, which we are going to impact later on in this tutorial. Okay, so what I can do now to show you is the before and after of just the tone curve. And as you can see, it's added in a nice amount of natural saturation. Okay, so what we're gonna do is turn off that tone curve and we're gonna go ahead down to HSL color. Now we're gonna go over to the hue. Now HSL color is the hue, is the 
type of color, so red, green, or blue. Saturation is how much color there is. So if it's quite undersaturated, so it'll be more gray or overly saturated, it'll be very bright. And then you've got luminance, which is the brightness of that color. So if it's very white or very dark. And what we can do is independently target every single color brand with the hue, saturation, and luminance. So let's go ahead and target hue first. So in the hue, what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the red slider first, always start from the top, I always like doing, and we're gonna take that over to the left-hand side. I'm gonna add in about minus 40 in that case. Then we're gonna go to the oranges, and we're gonna go for about plus 15. Then what we're gonna do is go down to the yellows, and we're gonna minus those to about minus 25-ish. Then minus 23 in this particular case, and that looks quite nice. And then what we're going to do is greens, we're going to minus those by 15. And then we've got the aquas here, we're going to plus those. It sometimes affects it in the shadows, especially in the kind of sky that you can see there. But there's not much sky in this photo, so it won't make much of a difference. And then blues, we're going to take down a little bit. And I'm going to leave purple and magentas. So as you can see already, before and after, it's made a very subtle difference, but it's unified the colors a little bit more, making them a little bit more natural, almost monochromatic in this particular case, but very, very, very subtly. So what we're gonna do now is go to saturation, which will be the biggest impact to this photo. Okay, so now we've got the saturation up, we firstly want to affect the reds. So go to the saturation, we're gonna go to the reds here and drop that down by about minus 50. So go for like so. And there isn't much reds in this photo, but it would make a bigger impact if there were. Uh, then we'll go to the oranges and we're gonna drop those by about minus 35. And it's the same with yellow. Now yellow, we're gonna drop big. So we're gonna drop it all the way down to around about minus 60 in this particular case. So let's go minus 60 there. Then what we've got, we've got is greens. What we're gonna do is minus 70 there. Then we'll probably do the same with the aquas. We'll drop those down by about minus 60. And then blues here, we're gonna drop down to about minus 50. So we'll go for something that ends up looking like this. As you can see, it looking quite nice at the moment, but there's still a lot more that we need to do. So let's go ahead over to the luminance and try and fix this kind of very washed out bleach look. So in the luminance slider, what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and increase the brightness in the reds. So we're gonna go ahead, go for, Go for a little bit more, let's go for almost minus or plus 40 there. Then with the oranges, we're gonna take those down to about minus 30. Then we've got yellows here, we'll be doing minus 25. Let's take the greens here, let's bring those down a little bit more, let's maybe match the yellows. So uh, let's go for minus 25 in the yellows and minus 25 here. Then in the aquas, we're gonna go ahead and increase those. So try and bring those May mainly affect our kind of sky here, although there isn't much sky left, but let's try and bring up those. Let's do minus plus 25 there, and let's add a little bit more plus 25 here. And again, let's leave the purple and magentas alone. So as you can see, what I can do is do the before and after of literally just the HSL colors, and you can see we've made a dramatic impact. But let's add some colors in. We've removed a lot, so let's add some more in, and we can use the color grading sliders to achieve this. So what we're gonna do is go down from HSL and open up our color grading. So let's go ahead and open up our highlights first. Now I like adding in a nice warm amount to the highlights. Again, replicating that kind of sunset that you get. It's not quite sunset when I took this, it was about 5 p.m., but those colors were starting to come through. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, choose hue 40, which is kind of like an orangey yellow. And we're gonna add in a nice amount of color here. So I'm gonna go for plus, 27, let's go for plus 25, nice round number. And in the mid-tones, we're gonna go for the same color. So we're gonna go for hue of 40, and we're gonna go to the saturation here, and we're gonna add that back in again. So I'm gonna go for, uh, let's go for 20 in this particular case, so saturation of 20%. But what I'm gonna do is actually go to the luminance and bring that luminance up just ever so slightly. And then in the, sh and in the shadows here, we're gonna go to the blues. I always like adding in a complimentary look. What we're gonna do is go for, to a hue of 220 and then add in a small amount. So let's go for 5% saturation in this particular case. So if I show you the before 
and I'll show you the after. As you can see, what we've done is we've removed a lot of colors, but introduced more colors into it by using the color grading tool. But because we've removed colors, we can add in the specific colors that we want. So what I can do is turn off the color grading. The last thing what we do is gonna go to calibration. So inside our calibration, we only really wanna affect two main sliders here, our green primaries and our blue primaries. So we're gonna to go to our green here. We're gonna increase that by plus 10 and we're gonna go increase the saturation by five. So we'll go for there. And then our, our blue primary, we're gonna increase by 10. And in our saturation, we're going to increase by five. Oh, not 50. That's way too much, 5%, there we go. Now, if you wanna know more about the calibration tool, because I think it's an incredibly powerful and very underused tool within Lightroom Classic, go ahead and watch this video here, where I go a lot more in depth on how the calibration tool works. But as you can see, we are now done. So what I can do is show you the before, as you can see, quite a dark photo, and then I can show you the after. And we've added this nice warm tone look while reducing greens and yellows across the board by implementing nice warm tones. So what I'm gonna do, if I press Y on your keyboard, you can show you the before and after. So the before is on the left-hand side, as you can see, and then the after is on the right. We brought back a lot more detail, and I must say I am loving the colors, and it works really, really well with this photo. And there we go, guys. That is how you can create this beautiful warm wedding style color grading effect in your photos using Lightroom Classic. Here is the before and here is the after. And write down in the comments below, guys, if this particular effect worked for you.